This video is just going to be looking at the importance of infrastructure spending in the budget. So infrastructure spending, in, ter in terms of what Australia is doing at the moment, um, they've spent $36 billion in 2013-2014, or they, sorry, they predicted that they're going to spend 2000 <laughs> They predicted in 2013-2014 that they're going to spend $36 billion over the next six years. So that includes a whole range of projects that are going to increase our, improve our roads, increase our railways, uh, or improve our railways, um, reduce bottlenecks at ports. So the idea is that we're implementing all these packages designed to boost productivity and reduce bottlenecks. So bottlenecks is when there's um, infrastructure becomes congested and deliveries take longer. So we're talking about things like traffic jams or queues at ports or all these kinds of things. So the idea is that if we're able to expand our roads and railways, that should lead to lower commute times, um, transportation of goods will become easier and more efficient, that will lead to lower fuel costs and faster delivery times, which will reduce firms' costs of production, lower prices and increase our international competitiveness. And all of this will lead to more demand and additional employment. So the idea of infrastructure spending, lower costs of production, reduce bottlenecks, make it easier for firms to produce, reduce commute times and lower firms' costs of production. Um, as I said, it's road rails, infrastructure spending includes road rails and ports and it prevents congestion and bottlenecks which would which lead to increased delivery times. Um, sort of summed up all this in the last video. You can also make links to how international competitiveness will increase because of the um, cheaper prices which will boost demand and increase living standards because there will be more employment in Australia. So infrastructure spending can have a long term impact on employment because we become more internationally competitive. It also has a short-term impact on employment because somebody is needed to build that extra infrastructure. Um, a particular type of infrastructure spending that's occurred over the last eight years is the National Broadband Network, and they've been rolling out this list out now for a period of eight years. The idea of the National Broadband Network is to give people access to advanced broadband services so that we can boost our long-term economic prosperity. So the idea is to give more people access to the internet, which will help to cut production costs. Um, more people will be able to be involved in things like teleconferences on Skype. So rather than businesses having to go to one place for conferences, they can do conference calls online, and that, desi that is designed to reduce their cost of production because they don't have to travel. So that's a big thing for lowering firms' cost of production. It will make them more willing and able to supply as well. Other things that it will do, it will make it easier for businesses that market and sell their products. So because of the increased connections available, they will be able to um, communicate more effectively with their clients and that will help them to save money so they don't have to go out to, on the streets and actually market their business in that way. So it's all about lowering the cost of production for businesses. It will also make them more productive because the, um, the use of the internet will be quicker and more efficient as well. So they're all reasons why the, the net, National Broadband, Broadband Network is a supply-side policy. Less time spent um, on for tele, uh, teleconferences can reduce travel times and make sure businesses don't have to meet each other in person. It's quicker to market and sell your products. It's more productive because you're wasting less time than waiting for things to download and things on the internet. Um, other things that can be used for supply-side policies, any money on healthcare. So if we spend more money on improving the... Um, Improving uh, people's health care, then that's going to lead to less sick days, which again makes us more productive. Um, businesses will be paying less to cover sick workers. So, for example, teachers, when they're sick, someone has to come in and sub for that teacher. That costs the school a lot more money. Both people have to be paid. That increases firms' cost of production. It's the same with a lot of workplaces. The more sick days, the more higher the cost of production for businesses and the less productive they are. Um, the government also spent a lot of money on the disability um, insurance scheme. So they've spent $19 billion on helping people with disabilities. And while part of that is just to um, help these people out in society and help out their families, it's also partly to do with trying to get people back into the workforce. So some of these people with disabilities that don't prevent them from being in the workforce long term, the idea of this funding is to get more people back in the workforce, increase competition for jobs, and have less people reliant on welfare spending. Um, other things that you can expect to increase the supply side of our economy, any money to ed education and training. So here you can talk about the youth jobs plan from this year's budget. Um, any money spent on training or skills can go into this uh, figure as well. That makes us more productive because highly skilled people are more efficient. Um, it leads to more innovative work practices and will should it boost our living standards in the long term. Um, highly skilled people are more likely to be in the labour force as well, so that will help to reduce skill shortages and reduce the amount of structural unemployment in the economy. All things were leading to businesses being more willing and able to supply, 
because increased competition leads to lower wages and boosting our aggregate supply going forward. Thank you.